No, I felt that very often that my father had a very ethical agenda, and uh, and uh, he was really totally afraid. And never mind what, what. And I wanted to push the boundaries. I think I was about to say ten or something. Say, so "Daddy, is this legal? Says, Why do you want to do that?" I says, "Well, I'm not saying I want to do that. I just want to know is is this legal according to our legal system?" So, so you want to do that? You should never do it. So I'm not saying that. I just want to know. So is it legal? No. So I sense that at that point, you know, it was not a, an opinion of poveritate in favor of the truth, but actually a way to influence me. And so then I developed various schemes whenever I felt he, he went into this, you know, ethical mode to extract the truth out of him. And, you know, as a kid, you know, you depend on the parents to do the truth. And my father wanted to be truthful, but he had also this coloration of uh, ethical behavior. And I really felt that I had to be careful in catching which was which. And somehow that also was, in some sense, a germ for a later work that I did in interactive proofs in which you had the... A, a very bounded, a limited a verifier who talks to a very uh, omnipotent prover, and the omnipotent prover is somebody who can actually convey and lead you to the truth, but also to try to convince you of a falsity, and therefore we engage in a game, and how can you, limited as you are, try to, to put uh, checks on somebody which is actually omnipotent, and so on and so forth, and then I realized that uh, somebody, people say, well, how did you think about that model? <laughs> so for me, I said, I knew where it was coming from, okay. A zero knowledge proof is a way to somehow allow you to prove a statement without letting, uh, in a very convincing way, without letting any inkling of why this is so. It's like if the sky opens up and somebody says, this number is part of the three primes, okay. When you believe it, you say, more than this, you are actually convinced of it but you don't gain any more information than the statement itself. That is what a zero knowledge proof is. And, uh, and then say, but who cares about giving proofs of it are so forth? But that uh, actually is the, the same technology that then you use to merge correctness and privacy. Right? It's very easy, for instance, in an election, you want an election to be correct and private, right? But uh, to have an election correct, say, okay, everybody tells me digitally sign or sign what the vote is. I go on public TV and I say, I have 17 no's and 13 yeses. They, they, uh, they no win, okay? And they say, here, uh, right? And then everybody sees uh, the digitally signed piece of paper by the participants and say, that is true. But there is no privacy whatsoever. On the other side, if I want to have privacy, I can just say, what's your vote? Yes. What's your vote? Mm, yes. And then I go here, ladies and gentlemen, there are 17 no's and 13 yeses. They no win. So, hey, it will be a revolution. <laughs> How do I know? So the notion that you can have your cake and eat it too it can be done. You can actually have both correctness and privacy. So you can actually be sure of the correctness of the tally and you have no idea about who voted for whom. And you can have them both. And so you can see that this is actually is um, a kind of you know um, an important development in uh, in cryptographic theory, right? Because you know uh, people love privacy, <laughs> right? And uh, people love correctness too. <laughs> if you can actually have both, that's a, that's a good deal. If I can forge Bill Gates' signature of Bill owes Silvio a billion dollar, you know the digital signature would be no good. But then, if you think about it, you don't want the inability to forge a message from scratch is very little. Because if I receive a signature of somebody that they owe me 10 bucks, okay, I, I, this I could not forge it beforehand. But once I see one, the signature, can I transform it into a signature that same person owns me 100 bucks, 1,000 bucks? I multiply somehow how much he wants. That, that would be, a, the, the, the digital signature would be in danger also. If you think about it, you want that the process of digital signature should be unlearnable. Okay? And so that, what this zero knowledge means is that you can sign as much as you want, but you want to prove that you are not getting any knowledge sufficient to sign the digital, forge the digital signature of a new message. That's, for instance, where it comes from. 
And nowadays, all self-respecting signatures are of this type. They satisfy this, uh, this type of condition. So, so it, it, it has actually a, 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 a variety of, uh, of applications. So by the way, uh, interdisciplinary work, I believe it ultimately is the most interesting work, but doesn't mean that you can actually sell it. It may be actually be a very lonely and uh, peppered with, uh, uh, with a lot of um, sad feelings and rejections, right? I mean, you know, uh, even this uh, very paper on uh, zero knowledge proofs, right? It was rejected five times, maybe four. And because, you know, and, you know so we, we applied all tricks on the books to, to, to make it accepted. First trick is to change the name so that <laughs> the people will not recognize it was the same paper that somebody else rejected before, just in case they were. So then uh, we, we changed the abstract, uh, we changed everything, nothing. It was scanned every single time. And um, at, at some point in time, uh, finally got accepted. And, uh, and, and, and you know, and it needed to be accepted. In some, some, some sense, of course, Schaff and I and Ragoff, um, uh, which were co-author of this paper, we certainly went around discussing it and presenting these ideas, but there is no such a thing like the imprimatur, the seal of approval that has a, a major conference has accepted, and that really helped these uh, ideas to take over. So what I really believe is that all this uh, a theory of zero knowledge and security in this sense essentially allows for more interaction, allows us to safely interact with somebody, safely from a correctness point of view, safely from a private point of view. We will interact more and no less. And so we are going to be perhaps even more human and facilitate human interaction that way.